Welcome back everybody, my name is Dustin and in the last video we actually got our render system working and now we have this uh, little rolling eyeball in the editor. Today we're going to actually start looking into runtime reflection using ENTT's meta system. In our case, we're going to be using reflection to allow us to invoke various functions and components between Lua and our engine. We will also be using it to help us draw all the components that each entity has in the editor. So for now, let's have a small talk about reflection. So what is reflection? Reflection allows for known data types to be inspected at runtime. This allows us to get the information about the reflected classes, methods, fields, and be able to invoke those methods or change them dynamically. Currently, C++ does not have reflection built into the standard. However, there are some third-party libraries that you can use. In our case, we're going to be using the ENTT Meta System, or Meta Library. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's Meta is what we're going to be using. We already are using ENTT for our ECS system, so we might as well make use of some of the other features that are already provided. In order to create or register types, we need to use the ENTT meta function. The meta function returns a factory that we can use to build up the type that we are reflecting. You can use the meta function to create constructors, destructors, member variables, or data members. Multiple setters are available using the ENTT value list if needed. Member functions, free functions can also be used here as well. From the perspective of the client or the user, the free functions seem to be part of the type in question. They don't really care about the underlying details of the type. You can also do base classes and many, many more things can be created using the ENTT meta functions. Okay, so where do we need to start? The first thing we need to do is register our types with ENTT and build them the way that we want them to be reflected. In the case of our components, we can use a simple template where we take in the component as a T component and build the type from there. You can see here, we are just using free functions. However, from the user's perspective, it will look as if it's part of the entity and component classes. Also in the editor, we'll need a way to visualize all the components that the entity currently has in the scene hierarchy. Something we can do is give each component a draw component function and use meta to to register them. We can do something like this here. We can create a free function template that takes in an entity reference and a corresponding registry. What it will do here is it will get the desired component from the entity, then call the draw component function. We would then have to register each component that we want to see in the CNI hierarchy with the function like register component draw info below. This function will take that free function above and register it for each component that it is called for. So basically calling the meta function on the T component, it is getting the type and it's just a type hash, ENTT type hash, of T component, we're getting the value that is returned. That's going to be our type. And then we're setting a template function, get entity component info of this T component. And then we'll be using this hash string, get entity component info as the function to be invoked later on. The main development of the engine is further ahead than the videos. And I'm already doing something like this to get the components in the UI. Let's take a look at that now. All right, as you can see here, we have our scene hierarchy and we have this loaded scene, the factory. And these are all the game objects that we have. Later on, we'll get into how to do this, where we can add children and have parents. And that's all later on. Uh, but if you click here on Toasty, that's this guy right here, and go to Object Properties, we see all the components that he has. And you're able to change them and set them however you like. And if you right click on here, you can add a new component. And this just gives you a drop down of which components you want to add. And if you already has the component, it won't allow you to add the component. So what happens here is it take, checks the storage of all the components and see if this entity exists. And if it does exist with that component, it will draw this. And that's what that draw component info function is doing. But this is where the engine is right now. I'm currently working on this one. This is the development engine. And then there's one for the video that we're slowly bringing up to, to this one. This one, you already have scenes. We have the tile map editor. We have UI display where you can change the UI. And we're also reading in scenes from Lua currently. So we can enable physics and let's just try the scene out. And basically this is what it is. You can die. It's actually working. So we actually have a working engine right now. The physics we're using is Box2D. And we'll get into that in later videos, but this video is just gonna focus on actually getting the reflection working, because we'll need that to help us later on. Okay, so now that we have a little better understanding of what ENTT Meta is, let's go over to a test project and try it out so you can see what's happening in real time. This video, we're not gonna be using it in our engine, we're just gonna do a little bit of testing. So let's do that now. All right, so this is just a little test bed project that I created. It has, it's where I just do a bunch of testing. If you see here, like I got file watcher, email builder, different things, uh, abstract email, but different things that I've been just working on for fun. But to get a better understanding, I recommend you guys do that as well. Just keep 
digging into different features and different things of the language to get better. What we're gonna do here is just test out some of this ENTT meta. So let's make just a struct and we'll just call this the test, uh, test type, test type we'll call it. And we'll just give it some member uh, variables. We'll say X and that'll equal one. Let's have Y and Z. And it'll be one, two, three. And this is, it'll be Z or Z, wherever you're from. Two, Y. Okay. And we'll give it a little member function as well. And we'll just call it testing. And this will just be void testing. Okay. And this will just take in to int, uh, okay, say A and int B. And this function will just do something simple like std c out um, value of x plus y plus z plus a. And then let's just put this all in a bracket. divided by B, let's see if that works. Well, if we do divide, it might not work properly, but hey, let's do it anyway and see what happens. And the, uh, okay, so there we go. We have our test type. And now what we're gonna wanna do is actually reflect this type. So right here, we can start reflecting this type. So let's go ENTT meta, and we're just gonna send in our test type. So what this does, if we highlight it, it will return a meta factory. So what this will do is it'll send back a factory that will help us build this type. And from here, so we can just go type, and the type is going to be ENTT type hash. Test type. And we want the value from that. Now we're also gonna have some data members. So we'll say data, and that's gonna take in the test type X, and we'll have to, sorry, I'm messing up here. This needs to be in angle brackets, X, and we'll call it X, and this is a hashed string. It needs periods, and we'll have a couple more data, so let's just copy this, control D, D, and that's Y and Z, Y and Z, Y and Z. Okay, and then we're also gonna have our function. So let's add that func in there. And that's going to be the test type testing function. And we'll just call it test HS. You can also send in policies if you want here, uh, as void, as is, different things like that. We'll get into that later. You should also look up the documentation. There will be links in the description. So okay, we basically we have our type here and it should be good to go. So now what we're gonna wanna do, so let's put a little comment here. This is just a, so create test type for meta, cool. So now we can actually get the type from meta. So we'll get the type from meta and it will return us the meta type. So we can go auto type is equal to ENTT resolve. And we can actually send in, if we just do this here and we go test type, this is gonna send us back if we highlight this again a meta type. Now you can also register your types as hash strings and it will know what type it is for you. It doesn't have to be based on this value. And then we can go auto data is equal to ENTT resolve test type dot data at X. HS 
and that will get, we can call this data X. Let's just call it data X. Cool. So again, this will set, this here is sending us a metadata, but we can't really do anything with that just like that. We're gonna need to actually get a type. You can't just say, hey, let's set this data to whatever because we don't actually have anything constructed yet. So what we can do is construct a type. We can go auto any is equal to type dot construct. So what this will do, will actually can call the constructor for us and construct a type and it returns a meta any. If you see that it returns a meta any. And then we can go auto x data is equal to data x dot set any. So we have to actually send in the object and we're gonna set it to five. Cool. All right, so now that we have that value set, we can actually try to call the function. So we can go auto func is equal to ENTT resolve, resolve, and test type. And we're gonna actually wanna call the func, and that func is the testing func. Testing uh, HS. And that will return us a meta func. So you can check to see if the func is there, but we're not gonna do any checks right now, this is just for testing. So we just go func.invoke. And we need to send in meta handle here. So an instance of a meta object. So we're gonna be sending in right now the any, but sometimes you can send in an empty object if you don't need an actual, if you're invoking just like a free function or something, you probably don't need the meta, but this is actually part of a member object that we just created, so we need to send that in. And then you need to send in your variable arguments, and the arguments that we're gonna send in is our A and B that we set up here. So let's go 12 and 12, just for fun. And this function doesn't really work the way that I want it to. So let's actually just get rid of this. And let's just go std c out x, x, y y z z and then we go let's just do a a b this is just to see if it is actually sending in the values that we want. Okay, so this is just for testing. So now we should see our default values here, but this should actually be five now because we changed it. And the other one should be two and three, and this should be 12 and 12. Okay, then let's see if that's what pops up. Awesome, it's exactly what we saw, except for that needs a space there, but hey, it's all good. So five, two, three, 12, 12, cool. So what you can actually do is you can loop through just ENTT resolve and you can get all the types and the IDs that are associated with them that have been reflected. So right now we only have one, but we can do that. We can go four auto ID and then type. And this is ENTT resolve. Just resolve by itself should return all reflected types. And we're just gonna go STD, C out, type, dot info, dot name. We'll just send back the name and see what that prints for us. And it's the structure and it's test type. So if we come up here and change it, it knows it's a struct, let's change it to a class and we'll just make this stuff public. Cool, I'm not sure what this is telling me. Cool, different, different things can happen. So everything's public for now, that's fine. And everything should run the same, but it should change the class. Cool, see how it's class test type now? So it's been reflected, it knows it's a class, and we'll just change this back to struct. 
So say we want to actually have some free functions with this because it doesn't know. So, so we have this one testing. Let's make another function up here and we'll just say void and we'll just call it testing free. Okay, and then this will take in A and then we'll just do B again. But it could be whatever you, you, it needs to be. So we have this free function. Problem is it doesn't know about this. So if you want the test type to actually, like if you want the, to get these values, you need to send one in. So you would have to send in a test type reference and we just say T that's as our free function. We have, we'd want to set that, send that in. So we'd end up with three different variables that we want to send in. Okay. And then we can go STD C out. This is the free func. We're not going to do anything in it because it's just for fun. So we can just get rid of that for now because we're all we're doing is testing and we'll just copy this line, get rid of this and we'll call this testing two. So now we have, and we want to take this one out and now this is just testing free. So now we're setting this up as a free function inside of our reflected type down here. We can invoke that so we can go auto free func free func is equal to ENTT resolve test type. Funk. And we, we, what did we call that again? Testing two, just testing two. Cool. Oh, HS, sorry the hash string and that's where we're using this up here as well the uh, ENTT literals okay so now we should be able to invoke the free func let's see what happens so free func dot invoke now I don't know if we need a handle for this we'll send in no handle and we'll send in just some random values Now we didn't check to see it yeah, and it worked. See that? So we got our free func and it's part of the struct type. All right. So in the next video, we'll actually be starting to get into where we're reflecting our soul types and our components or getting started in it using ENTT meta. This is a great library here too that I looked into. And this has actually helped me learn a lot about the how to bind the, the functions with ENTT. So I recommend you take a look at it. It's ENTT meets soul to Scarge. I think that's how you say it. 1989 is the developer here. This is a wonderful repository and I recommend you check it out. Also here, the ENTT has has its own docs here for the meta and this is just a little crash course of runtime reflection go over this this will help everything that we've gone over in the video also it'll help it get a better understanding for the next videos that are coming ahead these guys are much better at explaining things than i am so i highly recommend you start looking into the docs documentation is a beautiful thing and it helps you a lot all right so check it out and i'll leave the link in the description and i'll see you in the next video take it easy